<laughs> okay, uh, Katia is very good for generating uh, free meshes, and free by free mesh, I mean tetrahedral elements. And this can all be done in the generative uh, uh, structure analysis. If you need a fancy mesh, or if you need to do a fancy mesh, you really have to go to the advanced meshing tool. And I have tried to avoid that in, in my class and in uh, many of the, most of the videos. However, uh, I would like to show you a few tricks. For example, this particular video clip is about making a, a hexahedral mesh uh, 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 using the, uh, the, the, the tool that's available in, in uh, uh, advanced meshing tool. Uh, okay, so let me start with a box. I'll make a very simple geometry here. Uh, let's see now, where is this part? Let's make a box. So uh, on this face, I will sketch a one by one. Uh, well, actually, the size of it doesn't really matter. So. Okay, so I'll leave it like this. Uh, exit. Well, I guess this is about one inch. Uh, so uh, then I'm going to pad it by. Uh, uh, I'm going to pad it by uh, ten inches. Okay. Very good. All right. Now uh, I will uh, apply material to this. Make it out of aluminum on the part, and then we close. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is create a a mesh on this face, and then sweep or extrude that mesh. When I say mesh on this face, obviously we're talking about shell element. Okay. You create shell elements on this face, and then sweep or extrude it in the length direction. Okay, so uh, well, first of all, let, let's go to the generative. Uh, wait a minute, I need this face. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract that face. So we go to the generative structure analysis for wireframe and surface design, and there is the ex extract. There is the extract icon right there. You select this, and there we are. So now we have a, f a surface here. Okay. Then we're going to go to uh, uh, we can go we can go to the advanced meshing tool, and I'm going to mesh this face that I extracted, the surface that I extracted, with shell elements. Now remember, uh, we can do it with this fellow. Now this fellow octree uh, triangle mesher was also available in advanced meshing tool. So instead of coming here, I could have gone to the advanced meshing tool and uh, meshed it with this guy. But then I have to return to the advanced meshing tool. Uh, okay, what I should have said is that I could have gone to the generative structure analysis and meshed it with this guy. But then I have to return to the advanced meshing tool because I have to take that thing that I just generated in, in the generative structure analysis and sweep it. So uh, I'm not going to do it twice, so, and I'm not going to do it with this. I will make a nice surface mesh. Where are the surface meshes? Okay, just a second. Right, right here. This is the surface uh, surface mesh. This is the advanced surface mesh. Wish you can do a few more extra things here, but I'm going to use this. Okay, you click on that. You select this. And it says, do you want uh, only, for example, uh, uh, four-sided? The answer is yes. A mesh size. Now, this whole thing is, I think, about two inches. So I'll make this thing 0.5. I may have to change it so it doesn't look good. Okay. And uh, obviously, quad only. It's going to be quad only in this case anyway. But uh, uh, let's see that. Now you have to mesh it. This is what I call, see, this toolbar is called execute I believe execution and this thing that shows you a Z on the surface I call it zapping it but really it's called the meshing mesh the part and notice that it gave it to me remember this was about two inches I made this in 0.5 so I was more or less right now 
When you're done here, you have to exit this uh, uh, this uh, workbench right there. You have to exit this uh, surface measure workbench. It's right there. Okay. Now I would like to sweep this in the length direction. So uh, you click on that. <laughs> you got to read this thing carefully. First thing that you need to do is that the bottom left corner of the screen, look at what it says. Select the volume to mesh. Now, if you don't pay attention to that, you don't see that in the dialog box on the right side. Select the volume to mesh. Obviously, it is this volume. Then it says select one. It says bottom, but by bottom, it means one end where the mesh is going to get start sweeping. So that's this side. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, what I can do is this mesh that I generate here. Let me hide it so that it don't don't uh, won't uh, distract you. So this is the f the bottom, and then you go to the other side. This is the top face. Okay. Incidentally, this does not have to be a nice, you know, square shape type object or rectangular type object. It can be uh, a pyramid type object. We're gonna we're gonna worry about that later on. Okay, now there are other switches here that you can play with, and of course uh, you have a lot of control over over what you can do in a more complicated situation. But that's really not the point of this. I want to show you for relatively simple geometry how to create a a, a shoebox or hexahedral type uh, element. Okay, so I'm not going to change any of these. Okay, so I'm going to go to mesh. How many layers do you want? Layers is the number of things that are going to be created along the length. So let me make this thing maybe uh, eight, eight of them. Okay, eight layers. You can you do you want linear or parabolic? Obviously, because I started probably with linear. I don't remember what the shape was. That, that was linear. Uh, I may have to uh, stick to that. Now, this number is important. If this number is uh, out of whack, it's not going to work. So let me say apply here. Obviously, it worked. Okay. Now let me uh, let me uh, uh, re remove this. Let me go back here. Let me cancel that. As I say, okay, okay, this is the mesh that we created. So let me uh, double click on this one more time and go to this mesh and change this number to something else. So maybe 0. Uh, 0.001. See what happens. That 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 worked. Let me change this thing to 0. 0.1. Apply. No problem. Let me change it to one. And you want to get this message. So this number, you have to uh, uh, be careful. If it's out of whack, it's not going to work. So let me put point 0.1 back. In order to know exactly what this tolerance does, you should go and look at the the documentation of Katia. Believe me, it's not very clear. Okay, say okay. Now, uh, this uh, shell mesh. I have to deactivate it because I don't want this guy to participate. This the shell mesh that I created here. I don't want it to participate in my analysis. So you have to deactivate it. This is hiding it. It's not deactivating it. Right click, deactivate. So from now on, that mesh, even if you try to show it, see that? It's deactivated. So deactivate it. Oops, deactivate it. <laughs> That's what I meant. And then hide it. Hiding is just getting you off the screen that that's all now this surface the surface here that I extracted uh, is really not critical either I don't need it in fact I should hide that one too that surface hide the surface there is that the surface here yeah good okay so let's go to our uh, the rest of the problem is the rest of the problem has to be done in the Generative structure analysis. So you switch to generative structure analysis. Now, if the part doesn't show because it's hiding, your pad is hiding here. So let's go ahead and get it. 
where is that on the part body right here hide it okay so uh, for example let's make this thing a cantilever beam so this end say is a is clamped and the top is subjected to some pressure okay and then run it okay notice that one thing i forgot to do is to create 3d uh, acquisition field means that uh, it doesn't have any 3d property now the reason that uh, we run into this thing uh, ordinarily if the catia meshes it for us automatically with tetrahedral element it also creates the 3d property but uh, I did this thing myself, the sweeping I did myself, so you need to create the 3D property for it. And there is the toolbar for making 3D property. Actually, you can see that uh, under, uh, uh, under properties, see that? On the properties, on the properties right here, there is none, and neither is material. So you click on this. First of all, the support is uh, that mesh, that swap mesh right there. This was automatically picked up. Remember, I called, I made uh, made the material of aluminum, and then say okay. And this time it's going to run. All right, let's see it. Yeah, this is a coarse mesh, so it's not surprising that they, uh, I should remember my, my, uh, my computer doesn't display the, the contour of, uh, stress correctly, so deactivate it. So let me do the displacement. You won't have that problem on your computer though. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so I think the contours actually are not displayed correctly, so symbol is okay. As I said, you won't have that problem on your computer. So, uh, uh, this is the, these, these are the arrows, and then uh, if the graphics card was, was working properly, then I would see the uh, displacement contour uh, also. Now, I want to do another problem, just in case uh, we, uh, we didn't catch this, but let me close that. 